attaching a rail to the flywheel. Monstrous engine imbalance. Originally uploaded in February 2019. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Hey there, fellows. So today is actually the last day of this year's car's life cycle. The thing is that we've already used it to do a bunch of testing. We've conducted a ton of experiments. When we installed two, three, and even four motors, which we've obviously showcased on this channel. It was all good up until a certain point. It's just that this build is pretty useless. I remember someone suggesting that we cut all of this off and leave just the one motor it had in the very beginning. Anyway, so the idea is to create a serious imbalance on the factory engine that's fitted to this Lada, just to see what happens. The plan is quite simple. We'll be reverting the car back to just having one engine, while hacking the prop shaft tunnel and removing the gearbox, and welding a piece of rail straight to the flywheel, which will probably weigh somewhere around 10 to 12 kilos. After that we get the engine to start, and just wring the guts out of it and see what happens. What do you guys think? What's gonna happen to this engine? I have a feeling that the motor might come flying right out of the engine bay. But there's really only one way to find out. We'll see where this goes. Let's do this. Okay, so things are going great. We've removed everything up front, and we've done some hacking inside the cabin as well. We've detached the gearbox, exposing the flywheel in the process. There is a slight problem though. Once we started pulling everything apart, we saw... We recalled, rather, that we welded a piece of clutch pressure plate onto this pulley. So after a bit of thought, here's what we've decided to do. We start by welding a small piece of rail to the flywheel, and then we attach another one onto this here pressure plate. That should give us an imbalance of about... What do you reckon? Something like 20 kilos, I guess. Right, so we're still trying to figure out the exact size of the rail bits that we'll be welding on. A few of the guys from our crew are scared of the whole thing and don't want anything to do with it. I'm referring to you in plural, dude. <laughs> yeah, so one of our buddies is a bit scared. He's like, I'm not tagging along for this. Right, I say we start welding and figure it all out as we go. And you guys are obviously going to see the results. I have a feeling we're in for some quality fun. Okay, so we were able to source this here piece of rail. We couldn't find anything smaller, so we're just going to have to make do with this one. So it's about three feet long. It looks like an R75 grade rail, but I'm no expert in railroads, so I really don't know. Apparently they gauge them based on weight, right? Yeah, the grade depends on how much weight is in one meter. Oh, right, I see. The more you know. You guys heard what he said, right? It's all down to the weight. If one meter weighs 75 kilos, that means it's a 75 grade rail. Anyway, fellas, that's beside the point. What matters is that we have it right here, and it is very heavy, which is nice. The engine is definitely going to be happy. Let's do this. All right, we are making some progress. We are getting very close to destroying the car. I meant to say the engine. Right, so we welded a piece of rail to the flywheel. 
And we're really keen on welding something up front as well. So I've cut off a tiny piece of rail, which I'll be attaching to the crankshaft pulley. We've already got half a clutch pressure plate on there, and in theory this should at least slightly even out the balance. However, after Cyril welded some rail onto that side, he turned the engine over and suggested we do this at random. So yeah, he rotated the engine without showing me exactly by how much. And he's telling me to just position it at random and weld it on. I had a look and I did see a sort of lip down there which should actually work. Now I just lay the metal, tack it on, spin the thing and weld it all around. And after that we see how the weights are positioned relative to each other. If they happen to be in one place, as in the metal is at the bottom on both sides, with that piece being somewhat heavier, who knows what that could lead to. But that's what makes this so much fun. Let's do some welding and see how it works out. All right, so here's what we're looking at, fellas. After doing a bit of blind welding, let's have a look, shall we? This piece of rail we welded to the front is pretty much in top dead center. As for the other side, the rail is at the bottom. I promise you I wasn't peeking. So this means that the weights, while basically still being on the same axis, are located pretty much at opposite ends. Over here we have a wire rail, which we'll be using to get the car fired up. We've also brought a rope with us, which we'll be using to operate the throttle. As for the location where we're conducting this experiment, we reached out to some good friends of ours who run a scrapyard, where we've actually been before. The reason we came here is pretty simple. The thing is that that's a wrap for this car. Once we destroy the motor, which we've all got our fingers crossed for, our friend Gennady will be of no more use to us. The plan is to just leave him here. So what do you guys think? What's gonna happen? Feel free to pause this video and leave your thoughts in the comments. Afterwards we can read through the comments with the guys and have a laugh. As for our predictions, the crank pulley is made of iron, so there is a chance that it'll just shatter. Although it was able to cope with the force of three extra engines, meaning that it can withstand quite a bit of stress. In the back we obviously have a flywheel, held in by a bunch of bolts with thin thread. Right, time for us to unreel these wires and start the car. Okay, so we've covered everything up. Over there we have the wire reel, which is connected to the wiring for the starter motor. We have done everything up properly, given that if the car starts jumping the reel might fall off and we wouldn't want to damage it. The throttle rope we've already shown you. It looks like we're all set. Now we step away and fire up the motor. Let's do this. You should have given it some more gas. What happened? Step away, man! Be careful. Where's the battery? What happened? What's wrong? Wait a minute. Oh, for God's sake! Seriously though, what happened? Get some snow in there! Check that out. We're not done here yet. The pulley fell apart straight away. What's up? The rail is gone. 
What do you mean gone? Wait a minute. Show me the flywheel. Where'd it go? I have no idea. The heater core is gone. It just flew away. All right, guys, so what did you think would happen? In reality, as usual, this turned out to be one of those WTF moments. Then again, we sort of expected the crankshaft fully to let go and come flying off. Which is exactly what happened. As for the back of the engine, where we had a rail welded to the flywheel, well, this came as a surprise to all of us. The rail actually detached itself, while destroying the glove box and the heater core in the process. All it took was a small piece of rail. We also had some kind of short circuit. The fuel line ruptured, resulting in an engine fire. You saw the whole thing. It's a good thing it's winter. I mean, we were able to use the snow to put out the fire, so we're good. Our makeshift gas pedal also got barbecued. But it's all in good fun. Nobody was expecting this exact thing to happen. To be honest, we were actually anticipating something a bit more dramatic, with something major breaking off. But ultimately, that's not how things went down. No worries. So we didn't tidy up any of the wiring. It's all factory. So yeah, short circuit, engine fire, mission accomplished. Awesome. It was pretty fun to see it all start wobbling. Cool stuff. And after putting out the fire, we had a look at the footage and had a little discussion. We've even come up with a way to keep stuff from flying off either side of the engine. This basically means making some new pulleys with an imbalance built straight into them. We should be able to sort that out with no problem. Anyway, if you guys like this video, give us a thumbs up and hit us up in the comments. We might just get ourselves another car to do this whole imbalanced engine thing properly. We'll obviously modify the wiring and the fuel system before starting it to keep it all in one piece and avoid any short circuits and engine fires. Then we can start the motor and this time hopefully we break the crankshaft. Right, so that's all I have for you. Watch our videos, follow us on VK and check us out on Instagram. We also have a second channel. Okay, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Leave some comments and suggestions. Okay, catch you later.